love loons. But, oh, their calls are like really like beautiful. Or some people can find them kind of spooky. They're really interesting because they're like super highly adapted to aquatic life. So um, they don't have, like morphologically they're super cool because they have, um, they're, they swim, they dive. And in order to swim underwater, they actually use their feet, unlike penguins which use their wings or other birds that use their wings. So um, their feet are like way, way, way back on their body. They're like back here. <laughs> they like literally like come out of right under the tail. And um, as a result, they like can't walk on land. They kind of just like flop around. <laughs> um, they're a pretty large bird. Um, they live um, completely on water. They can't really walk on land. Um, and actually sometimes they can get stuck on small lakes if they land on a lake that's small, because in order to take off, they have to use big lakes as like a runway. Um, and also when they fly, it's really funny because their feet just kind of like flap behind them. First time I saw and heard a loon was on Lake Champlain. Um, and I was in a canoe and I saw them in the distance. And at first it was, well, I knew about loons at the time. And so when I suspected that this was a loon that I was approaching, I got really, really, really excited. Oh, okay. So like in my childhood, I guess I had, I saw loons during the summer and you kind of hear their call. It's like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a quintessential Northeast experience to, or like remote Northeast, I guess, um, to, you know, be falling asleep at night and you hear the loon call like echoing over the lake and it just creates this like really cool ethereal feel. I don't know, they have such a, a, a mysterious and entrancing call. And then, and then the next day I was running in the morning and I heard them calling on the lake and it was really, really special. Um. And one of my favorite things in the whole world is like going to sleep as you like are listening to the loon calls in the summer. Um, like my favorite thing ever. I always look forward to seeing loons, um, especially like out paddling or like canoeing um, is like a great opportunity to see them. And I love looking and watching them dive and then looking to see where they'll come up because they they go underwater for so long um, that like you don't really know where they're gonna pop up and that's kind of like a fun little game to play. Oh my God, absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. I think whenever I go to like areas in the Northeast where there are, you know, lakes and mountains, I really look forward to seeing loons. Um, it's definitely like one of my, one of the species I would look out for the most when I go to places like the Adirondacks. Coming from like a, a bird watcher background, I feel like my perspective, like I pay special attention to loons and, and I'm also taking a class about the Adirondacks right now and we talk about loons sometimes. And so whenever I see um, a, a loon, as like some kind of logo or symbol that some business is using or something like that. I just take note of it because I, yeah, I think, I think that they're definitely an icon of the Adirondacks. I mean, short answer, don't interact with wild species. <laughs> Um, generally leave them alone. They're wild animals and you're probably in their home. If... In general, any wild animal that you see, you don't want to harass it or <laughs> approach it or otherwise disturb its existence. Be respectful and maintain your distance. I mean, if you have binoculars, then look at it. If you don't, try not to get so, so close that you can really see it. I don't think you want me to try <laughs> to attempt a loon call. Ooh, shoot. I'm out of practice. I used to be so good at it. Ooh.